So by the end of this video, I want you to understand the basics of cryptocurrency, including what it really is, why blockchain is so important, and what's up with NFTs. I'm sure we've all had that conversation with a friend or family member where they're like, what is crypto? It is a digital or virtual currency that is secured by cryptography. It is just like a regular currency, except that it is 100% digital, as it is in the form of a digital asset based on a network that is distributed across a large number of computers. Each cryptocurrency is fundamentally just a combination of numbers and letters. In plain words, cryptocurrencies are digital assets in decentralized systems that allow for secure online payments. While this might sound confusing, it's really not that different from what we have currently widely available with traditional currencies. Each individual dollar bill has a serial number, just like you'd see with a cryptocurrency. This serial number corresponds to information like when the bill was printed, where it was printed, and the history of all transactions corresponding to that physical bill. In theory, a record of all currency transactions are kept by a central bank. In the US, our central bank is called the Federal Reserve System. The central bank shares this information with all the other banks across the country and with the government. When you hear people talk about decentralization, they're referring to the opposite of this. More on that later. For most of us, we don't use physical dollar bills, but instead use our credit or debit card for the majority of purchases. Each credit or debit card has a unique account number, which is associated with your name and personal information. The bank that owns this credit card keeps a record of all transactions, shares that with the Federal Reserve and the government as well. Each cryptocurrency is just like the serial number on a physical dollar bill, just purely in the digital form without any physical dollar bill. Just like regular bills, each cryptocurrency can be divided into smaller pieces. In the case of Bitcoin, each individual coin can be divided into 100 million coins, each referred to as a Satoshi. This is just like cents to a dollar. A cryptocurrency wallet address is just like a bank account number, but without the physical card that might come with that. With a traditional bank or credit card, you're required to provide your identity to open a bank account, and all transactions associated with that bank account or credit card associated with you are shared with the central bank and government. With cryptocurrency, you are not required to share your identity to open any kind of wallet. So the transactions in that wallet, they're not shared with any central bank or government. This is key to understanding the decentralization of cryptocurrency and blockchain overall. Now, all cryptocurrencies held in your wallet are actually held by you and not held custody by a bank, which is how traditional banks do it. You have total control over your wallet at all times. The downside of this is that if you were to get hacked or forget your security key, you would lose the cryptocurrency on that wallet forever. If you don't think this is an issue, imagine how you'd feel if you lost almost a half billion dollars like James Howell of Wales, who threw the hard drive out that contained the security key and forgot it. Needless to say, it can happen. With traditional bank accounts, these records are stored across a connected network ledger held by the bank and the government. With cryptocurrencies, these records are stored across all computers connected to a cryptocurrency network, referred to as the blockchain ledger. These records are public and can be viewed by anyone using something called a blockchain explorer. As there are likely hundreds of thousands of computers connected to this network with access to the blockchain ledger, this makes cryptocurrency more secure. This is called decentralization and is the opposite of how traditional currencies work in which records are held by a single government and central bank. A defining feature of cryptocurrencies is that they are generally not issued by any central authority, rendering them theoretically immune to government interference or manipulation. So what is blockchain? As its name indicates, blockchain is essentially a set of connected blocks or an online ledger. Each block contains a set of transactions that have been independently verified by each member of the network. Every new block generated must be verified by each node before being confirmed, making it almost impossible to forge transaction histories. The contents of the online ledger must be agreed upon by the entire network of an individual node or computer maintaining a copy of that ledger. Experts say that blockchain technology can be used in multiple industries, such as supply chain and processes such as online voting and crowdfunding. Financial institutions that you've heard of are testing this blockchain technology to lower transactions costs by streamlining payment processing. There is a future there. Now, what is DeFi? DeFi, short for decentralized finance, takes components of centralized finance, what we have in our traditional banking system today, and then decentralizes them by removing middlemen and replacing them with smart contracts. It's non-custodial finance where you don't have to trust a third party like a bank with your money. You still hold the keys to your crypto and you don't need to trust a middleman like a banker as it all lives on the blockchain network. 
The most common uses of DeFi are for borrowing money and then supplying money to earn interest. Loans in DeFi require you to bring collateral, just as traditional centralized loans would, but in DeFi's case, the collateral is cryptocurrency. There aren't any rules or regulations as to how much you can lend or borrow, as it is really up to the lender to decide how much they're willing to take on. If you're wondering how large the DeFi market is, it was recently estimated at about $250 billion. All right, so what are the types of cryptocurrencies? There are thousands of cryptocurrencies and every cryptocurrency is unique, but not always meant for everyday transactions. In general, there are two types of cryptocurrencies, coins and tokens. Cryptocurrency coins belong to cryptocurrency networks that were built from the ground up, meaning that people built the network using a ton of code to create a safe and reliable network. Cryptocurrency coins are the cryptocurrencies given to computers when they process transactions for the crypto network. Bitcoin, BTC, is an example of the cryptocurrency coin in the sense because the Bitcoin network was built with a ton of time and code. BTC is given to the computers that processes transactions for the Bitcoin network. Because it's so hard to create a crypto network from scratch, only a few dozen cryptocurrencies are actually coins. The majority are tokens. Now, crypto tokens are easy to make and can basically be created in a matter of minutes. The stable coin USDC is a type of crypto token. USDC is basically fully backed by the US dollar and getting more popular as an alternative to traditional savings accounts. NFTs are also a version of crypto tokens and it makes sense why so many NFTs were created in such a little amount of time. With that said, what are NFTs? These are non-fungible tokens that, as the name suggests, cannot be exchanged or substituted with similar assets of the same value. To understand NFTs, it's important to understand fungibility, which is the ability of an asset to be exchanged or substituted with similar assets of the same value. An easy example of this is five $1 bills. These can be exchanged for a $5 bill, and that results in the same value. With NFTs, this does not exist, so each digital asset is a one-of-a-kind owned by one person. Just like there is only one Mona Lisa painting, there is also only one authentic, original, digital Mona Lisa painting in the form of an NFT. This record lives on the blockchain the same way other cryptocurrencies do. Technically, everything has the potential to become an NFT, so for many NFT speculators, they're going all in on this. As seen recently when an NFT created by Beeple, popular artists sold for $69 million at Christie's. Now, what gives cryptocurrencies value? This depends on the type of crypto we're talking about. For Bitcoin, the most valuable crypto in terms of market cap, it has value because it has a similar profile to gold, according to some people, and it has a limited finite supply. If demand continues to rise, simple economics would say that because of supply and demand, the price of Bitcoin will rise. That's just speculation. Many investors also use Bitcoin as a safe alternative place to store funds outside of the traditional banking system. Also, many other cryptocurrency prices are pretty tied to the Bitcoin value in a similar way that foreign currencies are tied to the US dollar. So these are what gives Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies value, but it's also what causes the prices to fluctuate so much as well. There isn't some tangible factor that actually gives any of these cryptocurrencies value like a stock or an ETF or fund. The values just rely upon factors like supply and demand. Other cryptocurrencies do not have a maximum cap like Bitcoin, but do have a limit on the number of new coins that can be generated each year. You may wonder, if they don't have a finite supply, why do those prices fluctuate so much? Well, Bitcoin is still the leading indicator here, so it inherently leads to investors speculating that the future of crypto starts and ends with Bitcoin. All right, thanks for watching. I hope this video was helpful. Please share it with friends if you find that this might be helpful for them as well. I'm Tony from Wealthfront. Take care.